Hey you guys. Uh, so today I'm working on making embroidered shirts. Sorry y'all looking at my nose. Uh, today I'm working on embroidered shirts, making little tracks. Hey you guys. So don't mind miss if I flash it on, on here, but you know, it is what it is. So this morning I'm definitely hooping, getting ready to hoop up some shirts to do embroidery right now i'm starting with two t size gray t-shirts for my little tractor shirts that i've been doing so i've pressed this one already i'm gonna hoop this one i definitely have my basing and adhesive spray right here and that's beautiful drawing and painting that my daughter did for me uh so i'm about to hoop this real quick and then i'm gonna come back over this way and do another two t-shirt for the iron that one actually i'm about to flip all of these inside out and iron these so that way they're already ready then i'm going to woo, come over in this direction and get everything going so i'm doing a little tractor applique first i already got my john deere fabric and everything ready to go I have some other fabrics over here that I've been using to make different stuff with. But today I'm going to attempt and try to finish as many of my little John Deere tractor shirts as I possibly can. And then I'm going to go and do a couple more of the little Christmas onesies for the girls. And see if I have some blue ones so I can do for the boys. But I'm definitely going to get that done. And as you can see here, I already got everything on my machine ready to go. And then just so you know, if you have a baby lock. Flourish 2, which is what I have here. You can definitely use these hoops right here. I got mine off of Amazon. So versus me going spend $102 just for a 4x4 four four hoop, I definitely was like, well, you know what? Let me try these out, see what happens. I tried them out. They work. I love them. And it was only $44 for these hoops. So you just got to make sure that they look like the actual hoop almost that came with your baby lock. So don't mind my coffee over there. That's my photo booth as of right now, even though usually that's where I'm pressing stuff at. As y'all can see, I got a shitload of projects just going on over here right now. But so this is the hoop that came with my baby lock flourish. As you can see, it has that little lift mechanism right here. This is the hoop that came off of Amazon that I bought in that box that came with the four hoops. It doesn't have the little lift right there. But what I was looking at when I was looking at the pictures is to see if this right here looked the same as the one on the one that came with my baby lock. And it does. And honestly, I've been using these more than I've been using these. But I'm trying to you know make moves and stuff like that so that's why i'm hooping both of these at the same you know at the same time so once i'm done with one i can go and move on to the other one but just so you know and i'll leave this in the description box below that these hoops do work on your baby lock flourish and so i'll definitely make sure i record that whenever i load this one on because i'm actually about to hoop this one now when I load it on and I started going, I will show you that it fits and it works and it doesn't cause any unwanted noises, anything like that. So instead of going back to your show sh sewing shop where you got your baby lock from, you definitely can order that off of Amazon for $44, $49, somewhere right in there. And it works just as fine. So now that I have both of these shirts hooped and ready to go, let's see which one. Okay. Let me put this one down. I'm going to try and do this one-handed. So, this is the hoop that, as you can tell, is not the one with the little uh, piece that goes up. This is not the hoop that I got with my machine. This is the hoop that I ordered off of Amazon that I was telling y'all about earlier. So, we're going to try and do this one-handed. All right. Here we're going to flip this so I can see. So, as you can see, it goes right on in there as if it always belonged. And then, bam, there we go. Let's 
go ahead and get this on here. And I do apologize. Earlier, I said that I was going to hoop this shirt. Definitely not hooping it. Definitely floating, floating the hell out of it. Because I've tried hooping shirts so many times before that it just... It got to the point where it started pissing me off. <laughs> so I was just like, okay, let me learn how to float. And boy, how do you just float and make a whole hell of a lot difference than trying to hoop it? So if you can get if you can get the floating technique down, by all means float shirt. But um and if you can get the and, the hooping aspect of your shirt down, go ahead and do that. I actually like floating the shirt a little bit better than hooping it because now I don't have to stretch it out too bad trying to flip it from the backside and all this other stuff. So I want to go ahead and press the start button so y'all can see that this hoop actually works in your baby lock floors too. And then just a tidbit of information, if you did not know, Baby Lock and Brother are like Toyota and Lexus. So they're made by the same company, pretty much use the same parts, just different brand name, right? So Lexus being the more high-end car, Toyota, not, not as high-end as Lexus, but still same maker. Same thing with Baby Lock and Brother. Brother being the Toyota, Baby Lock being the Lexus. Same thing, different story. Uh, well, not different story, but, you know, different makers. Unless, of course, Toyota and Lexus do make Baby Lock and Brother. But, because you see on here, it gives you, on this box right here that I got my hoops out from, it tells you what machines that you can use it for, which ones it works for. Nowhere on here does it say the Baby Lock Flourish 2. Uh, I'm not sure what those Baby Lock machines are down at the bottom, but it does work with some Baby Lock ones. Uh, for sure because it's on here, but it doesn't say for the floors too, but as you can see it definitely fits the floors too And like I said, I'm about to go ahead and press start after I drop my foot it because I can't work it with just one hand <laughs> trying to get all of this out the way and show y'all I don't want to end up catching my shirt underfoot like that and then having to work that out but if you ever do catch your shirt underfoot like that don't try and pull it out don't do anything like that because you can damage your machine and you can mess up your needle but what you can do is take this beautiful thing that most people don't like the seam ripper because that means you got to undo some shit that you worked so hard on doing. But in this case, it does come in handy. You just kind of slip it under there. If you have to, go ahead and break this stitch right here, either right here or right here at this level. So what I do is if it gets caught underfoot, I lift both the needle and the pressure foot up and off of the, um, off of the garment. And if it's caught... We're going to pretend if it's caught underfoot like this, I try and move as much of this out my way so I can see where the thread and everything got caught at. Then what I'll do is I'll come over to this side and I'll wedge my seam ripper right off in here and I'll start ripping out the thread so that way I can get my shirt without causing a tear or a hole in it to come undone and to get out of there. You just got to be really gentle and kind of delicate with it if you want to try and save the shirt and save what you have been working on. So outside of that, I just kind of wanted to show y'all that, show y'all what I've been working on. And as you can tell, yes, I'm using yellow as my outline. But that's because it was the last color in my machine because it was the last color I used on the other, um, the other tractor shirt that I've been working on. Plus, once I put everything on here, it's going to get covered up with the other colors that are going to be outlined. The yellow is going to get covered. So I'm not really too worried about that. Now, if it was just a regular stitch out, then yes, I would probably switch it to green or whatnot or whatever. But outside of that, I'm really loving my machine. I'm loving how everything is coming together, how everything is working. So I'm going to keep going and then I'm, I'll am i come back and show y'all another little 
tip that I've figured out for myself and I'm pretty sure had I watched enough embroidery videos, it's probably already out there. But just in case it isn't, I'm gonna show it to y'all. So another tip is whenever you're doing appliques and whatnot on your embroidery machine, make sure you have all your colors at the ready. I thought I had enough black to go ahead and do a couple of more of my little appliques with the tractor on it. I did not. So here I am having to stop midway through my project so I can cut out some fabric to put toward my appliques for my little for my little tractors. So the stuff that you're gonna need is gonna be it's heat and bond light. Let's see if I can there we go. Yeah, you're going to need heat and bond light, not the heat and bond permanent, because with heat and bond light, you're able to sew through it instead of, unlike with the heat and bond permanent, you don't need, there's no need for you to sew through it because it's going to stay. It's going to adhere. It's not going to go anywhere and it'll probably mess up your machine. I wouldn't know because I ain't trying to try it and mess up my machine in the process of trying to show y'all. But this is my fabric collection that I'm showing y'all right now some of it anyway these are all my cottons anyway i have so much knits and satins and stuff but that's downstairs in my closet there's like two tubs of fabric and then i have my linen closet here upstairs that's next to me that has more stuff than a little bit but um at this point in my life where i think i have enough fabric to cover down there any occasion that arises or comes up or anything like that oh down there that's my serger and my serger thread, some more tender touch, I think that is down there. I'll probably end up getting some more heat and bond light. But it comes in a five yard roll, so that's not really that bad. And it's, I wanna say it's only like $4 or so at Walmart. So yeah, and that's where I got these from. Got these from Walmart too. Got these, they already come pre cut on, I think these are, it's, one yard by 43 inches so you get a yard of fabric which isn't that bad especially if you're just using it for appliques and stuff and depending on the brand or the color if it's a solid or a pattern or a brand depends on how much you're paying for it i think for the disney ones right here they were like 644 john deere was like 444 i want to say and these were 444 and then they also have big ones like this so this is just muslin and it was two yards and it was, I think like four something as well. Even though I probably could have got it cheaper off the boat already for like a dollar and some change. I'd have to check. Right. And then they had these other cute little things. Oh, this is the package that the heat and bond light comes in. See, it says sewable, but on the other one, it tells you no sew. I also found some of these. These are already ready to go to be ironed on. For your appliques and whatnot all you gotta do is just pretty much stick them on the shirt let it do the applique thing and then cut out whatever you know what i mean it already got like the heat and bond on it anyway let me go ahead and cut this out and then get back to going you know doing my thing because right now we had the day off from work i've been getting stuff done over the weekend my kids are at school right now so that's awesome and it's quiet so let me go ahead and get everything done that I want to get done. All right, so when using your Baby Lock Flourish 2, if you do go on an extended break for any period of time and you had to cut your machine off because you didn't want to leave it on um, the whole time you were gone, when you come back and turn it on, it's going to ask you this. I'm just going to tell you this. Huh. Well, it shouldn't tell you this. Oh, that's because it got to reset itself. Sorry, you guys. Okay, so now we're gonna... Oh, no. Oh, there we go. Look, I'm so horrible. Anyway, sorry about that. So once you turn it on, let the carriage move and all that other stuff and get everything going back the way it needs to be, it's gonna ask you if you want to recall and resume the previous memory. You're gonna press okay. And it's gonna pick up right where it left off at. So where we left off at was with the black thread about to do the steering wheel and the little, um, that little thing there. Just so y'all know, once 
to fix what happened right there, what I just showed y'all a second, second ago. You can try and start where you left off at, but nine times out of 10, it's gonna stop you. And it's gonna pop this up on the screen where it's gonna tell you to check and rethread your upper thread. So what I'm about to do now is take my thread out. As you can see here, I'm gonna take my thread out and rethread my machine just to kind of get it going back so it can hook and everything with the bobbin thread at the bottom and get everything back cohesive. Hopefully this video helped some of y'all and you know, you kind of got to see the ins and outs of some of the stuff that I do or that I've been doing and hopefully you enjoy and you like it. Thanks for watching. So I know I said bye at the end of that uh, last clip, but I'm coming to show y'all this. So even though I re-threaded my upper bobbin thread, as you can see here, I've already, you might can't see it, but it's already made an attempt to go through and do this little window piece that goes right here. Well, because I had to rethread my up, upper thread, I didn't read that thread my bobbin thread, and I'm gonna have to rethread my bobbin thread. So, whenever you have to stop and fix a shirt from getting caught up underneath here or anything like that, just know you're gonna have to end up, especially when you're using the baby lock floors too, or any other machine, I'm sure. Maybe I don't know, I could only speak for my machine. So, baby lock floors too, you're gonna have to rethread your upper thread and you're gonna have to rethread your bobbin thread. Hope that helps. So as you can see, it's right here. It didn't stick all the way through. And I didn't go back enough to start it properly, but I'm okay with it. Only reason why I'm okay with it is because I'm about to lay that big piece of green fabric that say John Deere on top of it. And it's gonna go back over this whole pattern that y'all see on this shirt. So it's gonna restitch over that. And then you gotta think about how it's gonna restitch over that to make thick border lines across that too. So it's still gonna get down and it's still gonna be in the same place. So no worries about that. It's little stuff like that that you can fix and not really worry about it messing up your outcome unless it's just something that is one of those freaking nature things. And watch now, because I said that, it's gonna happen.